Well, hi there. Today's video is sponsored by Josh's Frogs. In fact, without them, I don't know when this would have been possible because this is a dream lizard we're covering today. And it comes as no surprise because Josh's Frogs carries really incredible dream animals. So, you know, if there's like a little beautiful reptile or amphibian that could be put in a gorgeous bioactive sort of enclosure, Josh's Frogs is pretty much your one-stop shop. They're gonna have all the animals, they're gonna have everything you would need for that enclosure. They actually sent us, you know, everything we would need to build an awesome bioactive enclosure like this one. And, and so we have, and we'll actually show you a little bit about how we did that a little bit later. And they're just a great company run by really wonderful people that love what they do and are truly experts. You know, then they, they really just bring you a great product, great animals, and I can speak from personal experience, I am blown away. I really just, I couldn't recommend a company more highly. I, I've been buying things from Josh's Frogs for years. When we went to Tinley, Josh's Frogs is one of the people I wanted to go meet because I just so appreciate who they are. So it is such a pleasure getting to work with them and I'm so excited that they've sponsored this video and sent this, a neon day gecko. Actually, they sent us a pair of them. Oh my goodness, I forget how much I love them. They're incredible. Neon day geckos, that's what I've always known them as. They're also known as Clemmers day geckos because they are Felsuma clemmeri. Uh, named after a biologist and I adore these little guys. Oh my goodness. There will be long periods during this video where I will probably pause just to stare at them for a while. So just brace yourself for that. In the past, we've covered the giant day gecko, which is an awesome lizard. And if you haven't seen that video, you should totally check it out. We will cover other day geckos in the future because the whole group is amazing. They are just incredibly charismatic and strikingly beautiful geckos, the whole lot of them. I, I don't think there are any day geckos that aren't absolutely gorgeous. But this one, the neon day gecko, might be the most beautiful of them all. And that pretty much puts them in the running to be, whoa, good jump little one. The most beautiful animal in the world. Oh, they're fired up now. This one anyway, that head's looking amazing. <laughs> Hi. This incredibly beautiful yellow head they have and those dark black stripes, those are all created by skin pigmentation, which are called chromatophores. But that incredible reflective sort of metallic looking blue that really puts these guys over the top, that is actually a structural color. So that is created by something called an iridophore. And you're gonna find similar structural pigments like in the feathers of a peacock, uh, also in the, the wing color, the, the bright blue of, of some butterflies, like the blue morpho butterfly, which is probably one of the most iconic and beautiful butterflies in the world. And this color is actually caused by the shape of the scales and the way that it traps some light and re reflects others at just the right wavelengths. And it's not created by the pigments within them, which is just amazing. For this reason, sometimes they're not gonna look all that spectacular. If they're, if they're under lights that don't have very much of the blue wavelengths, which are between 400 and 480 nanometers, you're not gonna see much blue from your geckos. But if you've got them under ultraviolet light like this, or especially natural sunlight, they just glow. So I think we've established that these lizards are at least among the most beautiful of all living things because they're just spectacular. If you know anything that puts these lizards to shame, I, I really, really want to know about it because this is about as good as it gets. Holy Hannah. You are so fun. I love you. But beauty isn't everything which is very fortunate for some of us. I mean, sometimes the most beautiful people, for example, have the worst personalities. To be perfectly honest, my first impression of my wife was that she was entirely too beautiful on the outside to be anywhere as neat as she turned out to be. So, are neon day geckos only beautiful on the outside? 
or do they also happen to be spectacular pet lizards? And most importantly, is the Neon Day Gecko the best pet lizard for you? To help you figure this out, we are going to rank the Neon Day Gecko based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. I was gonna say for handleability, I give the Neon Day Gecko a score of one out of five. I think that's true, I think it's true. But my personal experience with these two Neon Day Geckos from Josh's Frogs would lead me to think it should be much, much higher than that. At the same time, a lot of that could be just to the, due to the way that they've been socialized growing up. I know that my morning geckos are handleable in basically exactly the same way as these neon day geckos. Uh, but I spend a lot of time with my morning geckos. I get very close with them and they are not afraid of me at all. And most morning geckos are not like that. It is my understanding that neon day geckos are not always this amazing to handle. And so I'm gonna actually stick with that score of one out of five, but I can tell you, they can be much better. There's just so much about these geckos that make them terrible to handle. They're small, and as a result, they could easily be hurt or lost while handling. So that is a major consideration. They can also drop their tail, and being day geckos, probably patches of their skin as well if they're restrained. So you wanna be careful that that never happens even on accident. They are very athletic and they can potentially run right up the wall. So that's not ideal. But like I said, just like my morning geckos, these individuals have been just wonderful to handle. And, and so clearly, you know, if you get them from a place like Josh's Frogs that really works closely with their lizards and knows how to act around them and you know can lead them to not fear humans, which is actually not super hard to do with day geckos because they are so outgoing and personable, you can have a completely different sort of relationship with your neon day gecko. And it's special because handling them is delightful. It is an amazing experience and I love every second of it. I'm just drinking it in. These are clearly not for children to handle. That would be a horrible idea. And they're not for people who are gonna freak out when they jump because they do jump all the time and they might jump straight out into space. So you need to be somebody who's calm under pressure and who kind of understands gecko behavior and what it looks like when they're gonna jump and how you can get them back. I'll, I'll just share a little tip right now. This is a thing I've found for all geckos. Uh, it's riskier with some like tokes, but a gecko generally, if you want it to climb onto you, oh, go under your go under your watch. Come here just a second. If you want a gecko to climb onto you, the best way to do it is just to put your fingers right under their chin, and they will either climb up or hop right up onto you. And that, in my experience, works with basically every gecko, especially the arboreal geckos. Just come right under the chin. Just kind of stick your fingers under their chin, and up they go. You also need to know what they look like when they're getting ready to jump, when they bring those back legs forward. <laughs> they're just so cool. Like I said, it is just such an experience getting to handle these guys. Our macro shots that you're seeing right now, they give you some feeling for what it is that you can see when you're just up close and personal with these geckos. And that is just an experience that very few people ever get to have. And I consider myself so blessed to be in this position right now. There are a lot of great things though to handle them. I mean, obviously I love it. On top of that, they're not gonna hurt you. They're very little geckos. They get bigger than this, but they're still small. They're also very good at hanging on. They've got those typical gecko toe pads. They're an arboreal gecko, you know, except for when they decide to take a leap into space, they're probably gonna hang on to you pretty well. But it is definitely an unnecessary risk to handle your neon day geckos. But to be perfectly honest, Everything about keeping pets is an unnecessary risk. There's nothing that you ever do when you have a pet that is perfectly safe. And so sometimes your enjoyment is the reason that you're doing this. And that might be a reason to handle your neon day geckos. It is just a risk. You don't need day geckos at all and you definitely don't need to handle your day geckos. You know, and the best thing is, if it is too big of a risk for you, 
These guys are so personable and wonderful that there are lots of great ways to interact with them that don't require handling at all. But it's an experience that I'm glad that I've had. And the nice thing, as I've learned from my personal experience, having had these geckos escape a couple of times, which I will talk to you about that here in a minute, I can tell you that because they're so personable, and they're just not shy, they do usually turn up. And so if it gets lost, at least it will probably be found. When it comes to care, we give the Neon Day Gecko a score of three out of five. Care is actually a lot like what you would need for a tiny little crested gecko. The biggest difference is these guys are gonna need a, a UVB basking bulb, both for heat and for UV exposure. The truth is though, as we learn more, you know, we're finding out that UV is very beneficial for basically everything. So I would recommend it for a crested gecko as well. You just don't need the heat from the UV in most crested gecko enclosures. These guys do need a little bit of heat. They need a little basking spot in addition to just the, the, the benefits of UVB. And so I'd recommend it for crested geckos, even though they're nocturnal. They do spend the day exposed to the sun. They're just asleep. So overall, these are a lot like keeping a tiny little diurnal crested gecko. Josh's frogs sent us a ton of amazing supplies so that we could build this enclosure. And we're just gonna walk you through that right now so you can get a feeling for what it's like to set up an enclosure like this, a bioactive, awesome enclosure for your own neon day geckos or really any sort of day geckos or a lot of other tropical reptiles. If you'd like for us to make a full video showing the whole process that we used to build this tank, uh, we'd be happy to do so. So just let us know down in the comments. All right, when it comes to food for these guys, they're going to eat a combination of insects and diets like crested gecko diet. So, you know, I love crested gecko diet. It's the easiest thing in the world. And so having that available to them is magnificent. And then things like small or pinhead sized crickets, you're gonna wanna be careful with those so they don't end up chewing on your lizard. Flightless fruit flies are an excellent feeder for these guys. And really just any very, very small insects that they can easily overpower and swallow. And just make sure that you always dust those with vitamins and calcium supplements. These are gonna need to be misted on a daily basis, maybe a couple times a day, both to water your plants, if it's a bioactive enclosure, and to give these guys something to drink. If you're not doing bioactive, uh, then you probably need to mist a little bit less, not less often, just less copiously. You don't want your tank ever to be just saturated and wet. You definitely want it to dry out between mistings to a degree and uh, you know, getting them too wet can actually lead to re respiratory infections and other issues. And so just enough so that there's some droplets all around the tank for them to drink, but it'll dry out during the day. And make sure that you prevent any places they could escape from the enclosure. When, when I talked about our morning geckos, I talked about how enclosures like this are tough because they can escape. And these guys were routinely escaping from this enclosure when I first set it up. And I discovered that there's kind of a little design flaw with these Exoterra tanks. And I fixed it by putting a little bit of expanding foam in this little hole in the back of the lid that was allowing my geckos to escape. Now the good news about these guys is that they're very personable. The first time it happened, I actually found the gecko before I knew I'd lost the gecko. And the second time, uh, you know, I thought it, I might be just user error and so I made sure I did everything right. The next morning, gecko was gone and I found it up inside of the light fixture. And after that, I really dug around in that enclosure and I figured out exactly what the problem was and I've come up with this fix. So hopefully it works. I'll keep you updated down the road if I have any more issues with them, but I think that should take care of my problem. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Neon Day Gecko a score of three out of five. Obviously, just due to their size, they're pretty easy to kill accidentally. 
Uh, be really careful with lids when you're putting lids on the enclosure and doors. I've heard horrible stories of people who just met a little bit of resistance when putting a lid on or closing a door and discovered that they'd done something horrible. And so make sure that never happens to you. You gotta be really careful about that. Again, handling them can be a risk. I mean, there's some danger involved. Excessive heat and moisture are also things to really be concerned about. You definitely don't want to cook these guys. They need a little basking spot. But, you know, if you're keeping them in a small enclosure, you got to be careful that the whole enclosure doesn't get so hot and not give them a, a place of refuge. Also, make sure that there's enough moisture for them to drink, but that it is drying out in between. But the reality is, for a tiny little lizard like this, they're really pretty darn solid. Uh, one of the more solid little lizards you could get. And these guys are endangered in the wild, which is sad. I mean, it, it makes a lot of sense. Day geckos only come from Madagascar, and these guys just come from little regions of Madagascar. So probably even if their population was at full strength, they might still be close to endangered just because they live in a tiny little place. There can't be a giant population of them. But it's good news for us in terms of hardiness because it means that they're virtually in... You know, there's no evidence at all that really any of them are being exported. So they are probably all captive bred, and that is just great news. You can be guaranteed that the ones that you get from Josh's frogs are captive bred and out of this world. Barring any accidents with proper care, these guys should do really well for you. They're just little guys. When it comes to availability, we give the Neon Day Gecko a score of 2 out of 5. Obviously, they're available from Josh's frogs, so just... Just get them there and call it a day. Online, no matter where you go, is gonna be your best bet. So again, just get them from Josh's Frogs. They will be at expos from time to time. I mean, if you wander around the whole expo, you might be able to find some neon day geckos, depending on the size of the expo. They're very rare in pet shops. I can say I've never seen them for sale in a pet shop. Uh, though, you know, I've been to pet shops that sell other day geckos and other really cool day geckos. I just have never seen neon day geckos. If your local pet shop has neon day geckos, consider yourself blessed. And they're not rare because they're difficult to breed. They're actually very easy to breed. It's really just that, oh yeah, you're licking your eyeball. I love that. Why are you so great? Anyway, it's not that they're difficult to breed. It is just that demand is understandably high for these unbelievably awesome lizards. But the reality is, they're out there. They're on Josh's Frogs right now. So if you want one, just go get one. And in fact, they can hook you up with everything you'll need. So, I mean, just, just say I want a Neon Day Gecko and everything else. And uh, they will honestly be able to supply you with everything you will need for these geckos. And that'll save you something on shipping. And I just learned this. When you go to Josh's Frogs to get your Neon Day Geckos and all the stuff that you need, we've actually got a coupon code down in the description that'll save you 15%. Which, as you're about to discover, this is not a cheap lizard and uh, that's awesome! I am so excited about that. So, if you want to save 15%, use coupon code down in the description. That's awesome. I'm going to use it. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Neon Day Gecko a score of 3 out of 5. Obviously, being a ridiculously popular lizard, for obvious reasons, they're not cheap. They're, they're not an inexpensive lizard. There are a lot more expensive lizards. It's just for such a little guy, you know, something that costs like $150, that seems like a lot. At the same time, I think just since we've been filming this video, I've had $150 worth of joy come into my life. So this is the gift that keeps on giving. And if you think about, you know, the fact that it might be with you for a decade or more, that's money well spent. $15 a year for pure joy? Because this is pure joy. It's just a tiny little bundle of pure joy. You are pure joy. The rest of the enclosure is actually fairly reasonable. Uh, a 12 by 12 by 18 enclosure is very adequate for Neon Day Geckos because they're such little guys. And this is actually one of the more available and affordable enclosure sizes that you're going to find. You know, the, the hood, the, the UV bulbs, you know, those, those cost a little bit. You'll need to replace those regularly. Getting all your substrate, even to make an awesome bioactive enclosure like this, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. Honestly, it'll probably cost you less than the gecko. So... That's cool. I mean, usually enclosures are what cost you a lot. Geckos are, or whatever animal goes in it usually is not the big expense. In this case, the gecko is as big of an expense as the enclosure. Altogether, it's not that bad. Make sure that you have bamboo. These guys need bamboo. 
Uh, it's really important for their feet and just their happiness. I mean, as you see these guys climbing around, they're gonna spend a ton of their time hanging out on the bamboo because that is their natural habitat. So, you know, to build an enclosure like this, obviously we've walked you through it, but you know, you're gonna need to buy the hydro balls, the screen, the substrate, moss if you wanna do the moss, the, the bamboo that we've already mentioned. If you're gonna do our backdrop, you're gonna need Gorilla Glue and you're gonna need, uh, well, again, just the moss and the substrate. Crested Gecko Diet. You're gonna need calcium and vitamins. You're gonna need a little bit of charcoal, though this Joshua's Frog mix has it mixed right in there so you probably won't have to buy charcoal separate. Live plants, definitely the way to go. And cleanup crew, which includes springtails and isopods. And you can get all of this stuff at Josh's Frogs, which is awesome. You might need to go out to buy your own Gorilla Glue and screen, I don't know. And we'll have links to all the rad stuff that Josh's Frogs sent to us down in the description. And if you get it all at Josh's Frogs, it's gonna save you a lot on shipping, so. I know I keep talking about Josh's Frogs. It's not just because they sponsored this video. I don't have, there's nothing that says I have to tell you constantly to go there. But they're amazing, and they've got everything you're gonna need for these guys, so, you know, really check them out. In conclusion, we give the Neon De Gecko a score of 2.4 out of 5. They honestly get that low score because they're uncommon, expensive, and difficult to hold. Though, absolutely wonderful to hold under the right circumstances. That said, they're great pets. They are really great pets. They are beautiful inside and out. The personality, they're reasonable to care for, and obviously insanely beautiful. If what you want is a beautiful, bold, inquisitive lizard that fits in a small part of your home, but a huge part of your heart, then the Neon Day Gecko might be the perfect pet lizard for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. You are so cute. Oh, you're a very special creature. Hi, guy. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I forget. I forget how beautiful you are. Hi. <laughs> Hi, little one. Yeah, you are a good jumper. <laughs> you are so cool. Good jump. Where are you going, little one? Oh, they're looking good now. They're looking so good. Oh. Neon day geckos! I can't believe this is happening. Yeah, it's coming, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. You are so good. I love you so much. Oh, you're so wonderful. Why are you so good? Go into the watch again. Good job. This is the one you struggle with. There you go. <laughs> it is everywhere. This makes me happy. Oh, wow. They're so beautiful, it's insane. That one has fired up. Oh, they're both. Hi. <laughs> Why are you such, just, oh, they're the best creatures in the world. Why are you so great? Oh my gosh. Come here. Come on. Come on, little one.